Good morning. My name is Alex Johnson, and I'm proud to serve as president of Cuyahoga Community College. We are so pleased you are able to join us for this unique presentation as we continue our focus on student success during these challenging times. I continue to be impressed with the dedication, talent, and tireless work ethic of the students faculty and staff at Tri-C. The faculty and staff bring passion to their jobs, and together they have been undeterred in 2020 and well into 2021. We live in a community where there is such resilience. Whatever the obstacle, together we meet it and overcome. As the 2019-2020 academic year ended, Tri-C reported a three-year graduation rate, even under those difficult conditions that set a new benchmark for the institution with 24% graduating. We are on track to beat that record this year. Many Tri-C students are balancing school, work, and family obligations, and yet it is now routine that more than 4,000 students earn the title of college graduate each year, even during the pandemic. Those degrees and certificates bolster lives and families, paying off in better jobs and higher wages that stabilize households and add to the collective strength of Northeast Ohio's workforce. To put that number in perspective, graduates numbered only 2,760 in 2010. I want to thank our advisory committee members for their part in keeping Tri-C programs up to date in today's workforce. We are determined to make a difference and with your assistance, we are assured to do so. This morning, we are pleased to honor community members and members of the Tri-C family who have contributed to student success and introduce you to some of our outstanding alumni. It is also my privilege to introduce you to an outstanding leader from NASA who will be our keynote speaker today. Dr. Marla E. Perez Davis is director of the NASA Glenn Research Center in Cleveland. She leads a staff of more than 3,200 civil servants and support service contractors and manages an annual budget of well over $800 million. Prior to becoming center director, Dr. Perez Davis held several leadership positions at Glenn, including Deputy Center Director, Aeronautics Research Office Director, Project Liaison and Integration Office Chief, and Electrochemistry Branch Chief. Dr. Perez Davis earned a bachelor's degree from the University of Puerto Rico, a Master of Science degree from the University of Toledo, and a doctoral degree from Case Western Reserve University in chemical engineering. Her top achievements include NASA's Outstanding Leadership Medal and the Presidential Rank Award for Meritorious Executives. Dr. Perez Davis was also the recipient of the 2015 Cranes Women of Note the top 25 elite business women, and the Women in Aerospace Award for Aerospace Awareness. Dr. Perez Davis is with us today to share how our very own NASA Glenn Research Center contributed to the recent Mars landing. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Perez Davis. Hello, I am Dr. Marla Perez-Davis. 
and I am the director of the NASA's Glenn Research Center here in Cleveland. Thank you for inviting me today to tell you a little bit more about NASA's space exploration missions and our future goals. Before getting started, I would first like to recognize the accomplishments and work of Tri-C's advisory committees, community champions, and the distinguished faculty, students, and alumni joining us today. The work you do is important to our community, our educational system, and the future of our nation. So I commend you on everything you do at Tri-C. For more than 80 years, NASA's John Glenn Research Center has developed technologies and conducted research that allows our nation to continue exploring, discovering, and innovating to shape the world tomorrow. When it comes to space exploration, our legacy has been in power and propulsion systems. But we are now involved in many areas and projects, making Glenn a leading contributor to NASA's many missions. We lead the agency in the development of in-space propulsion systems, which includes chemical, solar, and nuclear propulsion, as well as cryogenic fluid management. We specialize in power and energy storage, including expertise in solar, batteries, regenerated fuel cells, and nuclear, as well as power electronics and power management and distribution. We are developing advanced materials and structures from the nanoscale to enabling technologies for the high performance, long life, and extreme environments, like those encountered during space travel and planetary exploration operations. We use our orbiting laboratory, the International Space Station, to study the effects of long-term space flight on astronaut health, while also using it to make advancement in fire safety, fuel systems, life support system, and exercise countermeasures to extend mission duration and enhance the safety of space travel. While in space, we need to communicate with each other and back to Earth. So we are developing cutting edge technology solutions to improve communications and navigation for satellites, spacecraft, astronaut, robots, and surface operation. And finally, both our campuses, Louisville in Cleveland and the Neil Armstrong Test Facility in Sandusky, houses some of the world's most powerful and capable test facilities for space and aeronautics. We do a lot at NASA Glenn, and the agency has and will continue to call on our expertise as we prepare to send astronauts to the moon and eventually on to Mars. NASA has embarked on a new mission to return boots to the moon, followed by human exploration of Mars in a way that is achievable and sustainable, and builds on successful commercial and international partnerships. We call this endeavor Artemis, and we are closer today than at any other time since Apollo to sending astronauts back to the moon. With Artemis, we will use robots and a diverse, highly trained astronaut corps from which we will select the first woman and first person of color to step foot on the moon in the near future. We need the moon to understand how to live on another world. It will be a proving ground for the exploration technologies and processes needed to reach further into our solar system. We will harvest its plentiful resources for long-term exploration and it represents a huge strategic and economic opportunity for all of us. Effort has been underway for years to prepare for Artemis, but it is truly start in earnest later this year, when we plan to launch Artemis 1, a three-week on-crew test flight around the moon and back. We will follow that in 2023, when we launch astronauts around the moon on Artemis 2. Once we have proven the systems and technologies we will prepare to send astronauts to the moon's surface on Artemis 3 around 2024. During this time, we will also use commercial rockets to launch robotic surface experiments, our orbiting lunar outpost called Gateway, and the human landing system. America's lunar investments will create jobs, lead the scientific discoveries and technological advancement in a variety of new areas that benefit both our work in deep space on our home planet. We're going to the moon to explore and we're going to the moon for scientific discovery. Our destiny is always to go and see what's further and what's next. The moon is a stepping stone and the moon is a place we need to learn how to live so that we can continue to go beyond. We are focused. 
We are focused on all that lies before us. Only together will we bring to life this global ambition of returning to the moon. And while our work is far from finished, we've never been closer to seeing a new generation step beyond our home planet. We are building on the achievements of those who came before. The giants who conquered gravity and raised a banner in the heavens, they beckon us to go farther, to the moon and on to Mars, to seek a deeper understanding of our universe and bring all that we learn home. 2020 was a year of unpredictable hardships, and yet, step by step, we resolve to press forward toward this grand vision. The daily efforts of thousands of suppliers from all across this country and around the world fed into stunning milestones and laid the groundwork for history. Launch team, go. Artemis has been woven into our culture. It has fostered collaboration across the aisles and across the ponds. It has grown beyond plans and preparations to include hardware and software. And now, it has a heartbeat. You can feel the momentum. It is undeniable. We are going. And together, we will see Artemis light the way. Our mission to the moon is no longer some far-fetched dream. This is reality. We are going. This is the next step in evolution. They're not just PowerPoint slides. They're actually metals being bent, shaped, formed to build the things that we're going to use. This is real. This is going to happen. We're going. We are going to the moon to learn how to live on other planets for the benefit of all. Let's go. As I mentioned in the opening, Glenn specializes in electric propulsion for space, and we will use these systems at the Moon and Mars. We use either solar or nuclear power to ionize inert gases to produce thrust. While it is lower power thrust than chemical spacecraft, these engines can fire for years, and they tout about 10 times better fuel economy than their chemical in-space propulsion counterparts. As a result, Electric propulsion is a very cost-effective, efficient method to reach the deepest destination in space. And this is why we have chosen electric propulsion for our gateway in lunar orbit. The gateway will provide a staging point for human and robotic operations, and it will help boost our ability to conduct in science and technology demonstration in orbit and on the surface. The power and propulsion element for Gateway is a 60 kilowatt class solar electric propulsion spacecraft, making it the most powerful electric propulsion system in existence. And we will use that power to move Gateway to different lunar orbits, thereby opening the entire surface up for exploration. It will be the first element to launch, along with the small halo habitation module and it will serve as the cornerstone of our Artemis architecture around the Moon for at least 15 years. Once we have established Gateway in orbit and our Artemis base camp at the Moon's South Pole, we will build infrastructure elements needed for a sustained lunar presence. Our astronauts working on the lunar surface will test advanced robotics as well as a wide array of new technologies identified in the Lunar Surface Innovation Initiative, specifically in situ resource utilization and power systems. Glenn plays a role in both. We are working on several in situ resource utilization, or ISRU, technologies and processes that will help us understand availability, extraction, and conversion of usable lunar resources, like water ice into fuel, water, and oxygen, for sustainable surface operation, thus decreasing our supply needs from Earth. Once we are sustained on the lunar surface, we will need to stay for longer and longer periods of time. But this presents a unique set of challenges in terms of available power. NASA Glenn is working with the Department of Energy to develop robust, cutting-edge power generators to ensure these systems can operate in direct sunlight, the shadow of craters, or the complete darkness of the lunar night. Our fission surface power project is developing efficient, affordable fission reactor technologies 
to enable long duration stays on the Moon and Mars. We have already successfully demonstrated a system capable of providing between 1 and 10 kilowatts of electrical power and are now developing mission concepts and performing risk reduction activities to prepare for a future fly demonstration. We're also sending robotic explorers to the Moon as part of the Commercial Lunar Payload Services Initiative, which will send dozens of science experiments and technology demonstration to the lunar surface in the coming years. NASA Glenn is helping with two early experiments. We are leading one that will study our ability to collect and produce reliable solar power on the surface. And we are helping to conduct mobility tests on the Viper rover that will spend 100 days hunting for water ice deposit at the moon's south pole for future ISRU use. We are going to the moon to unite humanity and maintain American leadership in space but our long-term goal has always been Mars. So let's talk about our robotic explorers on the red planet and what challenges lie ahead before we can send humans there. On February 18, NASA landed its most recent rover, Perseverance, on the red planet. It was only our fifth rover to attempt landing on Mars. During landing, the rover plunged through the thin Martian atmosphere at speed over 12,000 miles per hour. A parachute and powered descent module slowed the rover down to about two miles per hour before the sky crane lowered it to the surface. The Mars rover team used NASA's Glenn 10 foot by 10 foot supersonic wind tunnel to test a scale version of the parachute system, which you can see in the video side by side with actual visuals from Perseverance landings. During the test, Two kinds of parachutes were evaluated, which were eventually used for both Curiosity and Perseverance. The goal was to verify the parachutes would generate enough drag to sufficiently slow the capsules down. They also wanted reassurance the parachutes would open as designed and to observe the motion of the parachutes on deployed. After an intense but safe landing, Perseverance is now roaming the Jezero crater just north of the Martian equator. We believe this area owns contain a lake, and it is one of the most ideal places to find evidence of ancient microbial life. Once Perseverance was established on the surface, it dropped off the Ingenuity helicopter, the first vehicle to test powered control flight on another planet. This first flight was completed on April 19, when Ingenuity took off, climbing to about 10 feet Covered it briefly, completed a turn, then landed. It has since completed six additional flights, the most recent of which saw it fly 350 feet south to land in a totally new territory. While Glenn didn't contribute to Ingenuity, it does have a connection to Ohio. Before Ingenuity was loaded onto Perseverance, engineers at NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory attached a strap of fabric that uncovered the wings of the right flyer under the helicopter's solar panel, ensuring the rights plays a part in the first flights on Earth and Mars. The area on Mars where it has been flying is also known as Wright Brothers Field. Perseverance is powered by a multi-mission radioisotope thermoelectric generator, which you can see in the image before the rover was packed up at the JPL. These systems provide decades of extremely reliable and predictable electricity, and their excess heat is often viable too. It also allows the rover to work free of limitations associated with solar panels, such as the available sunlight and the buildup of dust. The power system of Perseverance was designed to operate for at least 14 years, and it is expected to operate significantly beyond the rover's planned mission duration. For years, NASA has worked in partnership with the Department of Energy to provide radioisotope power system for exploration missions like Cassini, Curiosity, and Voyager, bound up for the darkest, dustiest, and most distant places in the solar system. The main question Perseverance is trying to answer is, was there ever ancient life on Mars? And to help answer that is we'll collect, store, and drop off rocks and soil samples for return to Earth by a future mission. 
NASA's plan for this Mars sample return mission, working in collaboration with the European Space Agency, include the use of incredible, durable, and flexible new rubber tires developed at Glenn using shaped memory alloys. Tires made for these shaped shifting materials offer unmatched durability because they flex with the terrain unlike the rigid wheels on Curiosity and Perseverance. They can drive across sharp rocks without the risk of puncture, and they can be designed to provide a smoother ride, almost like adding shock absorbers to minimize potential damage to systems on the rover. We are currently building test tires for the sample return mission, and our engineering team continues for mature other tire technologies for applications on the moon and here on Earth, including passenger vehicles, military, and aircraft tires. The Red Planet has long viewed as the premier destination for human exploration. However, getting astronauts to the Martian surface and returning them safely to Earth is an extremely difficult engineering challenge. We anticipate the first humans to travel to Mars will embark on a two-year ground trip journey. This approach allows for about 30 days on the Martian surface, providing ample time to search for life. To get there, we will need to continue to advance the high power electric propulsion necessary to transport humans and cargo safely and efficiently from air to Mars. The faster the crew can get there, the more the risk of long duration space flight are minimized. Advanced materials will be needed during the entry, descent, and landing stages that reduce external forces on spacecraft and increase astronaut safety. We will leverage the surface power technologies we already discussed to power our spacecraft and surface operations. Beyond those two systems, NASA Glenn is also advancing other surface power generation and distribution systems that will work together to ensure those missions have the plentiful, reliable power required to be successful. Because of the required time to travel between Mars and Earth, Long duration habitation and ISRU will be needed to keep the crew safe and healthy during the 30 days surface mission. A habitat will protect the crew from exposure to galactic cosmic rays, solar particles, and the effects of microgravity. They will also need rovers and vehicles for excursions and experiments across larger areas of the moon and possible extended stays away from the habitat. Using what we have learned on the moon, our advanced ISRU capabilities will extract and process Martian resources to produce air and water for the astronaut and fuel for vehicles while on Mars and for the trip home. As discussed, we have been very successful landing rovers on Mars, and we will have the experience on the moon to help guide us. But putting humans on Mars is a highly ambitious undertaking. Mars is our horizon goal but we must first lead the return to the moon, especially as global interest and capabilities in space exploration continue to expand at a rapid rate. We must decide now whether we will build on our legacy of American premonition or take a back seat and watch as other nations define humanity's future in deep space. NASA is committed to achieving our exploration goals and to reigniting America's passion for technology, innovation, and discovery. And I hope you will come along on this journey with us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Perez Davis. It's fascinating to learn about the important role our very own NASA Glenn Research Center plays in the United States Space Program. I'm Karen Miller, Provost and Executive Vice President of Learning Access and Success at Cuyahoga Community College. I've been asked to give you an overview of the advisory committees and to introduce you to our 2021 Outstanding Advisory Committees. Cuyahoga Community College occupational programs are required by the Ohio Board of Regents and in some cases the Ohio Department of Education to create advisory committees. We are fortunate because this region has many professionals who lend their knowledge to faculty and staff to ensure students receive the very best education possible that enables them to step into a job as a valuable team member. 
At Tri-C, we establish additional advisory committees for special purposes, such as our apprentice programs. Each year, outstanding advisory committees are selected based on specific criteria, a review by committee, and recommendations. This year, two exemplary committees have been chosen, and we are proud to honor their work. First, the Business Advisory Committee led by Tri-C Program Manager Robin Williams and Associate Dean Pam Grant. Business advisory members include David Cheney of Cheney Consulting Group, Kelly Bernstein of Meaden and More, Karen Hildebrand from Twin Sisters Digital Media, Justin Horton of Stratus Wealth Partners, Tammy Jett Perrine of Peas and Associates, James Kasberg of Progressive Insurance, Drusilla Knutson from Neo Innovation Coaching, Mark Owens of Relate Care, Jennifer Phillips from Gallagher Sharp, Maltrice Sharp of CLE Consulting Firm, Mark Seltzner from Cleveland Clinic, Andrew Worms of Zaremba Management Company, and Greg Jonovich from Lubrizol Corporation. Congratulations to all of you for your excellent work to ensure student success. Next, we are proud to honor the IT Center of Excellence Advisory Committee. Congratulations to Program Manager Deborah Doro, Dean Chuck Dull, and the following Advisory Committee members. Todd Adams of Visibility Marketing. Cal Adubabe from Pandata. Patrick Alizia from Converge One, Rich Bohm of Cisco Systems, Rocky Brockway from Trusted Sec, Andre Bryan of APB and Associates, Peter Grappuschen from Progressive Insurance, Matt Hughes of Dolby Systems, Nikki Krause of United Way of Greater Cleveland, John Lindley from PNC, Anthony Long of Breakthrough Schools, George Mihawk from Safeguard Properties, Jay Mellon of AtNet Plus, Terry Flaterer from RPM, Christopher Prewitt of MCPC, Quinton Robinson from Highland Software, Tiffany Smith of Dolby Systems, Perui Serini Vasalu of Chris Services Group, Dr. Jane Seuss from Erie Insurance, Jess Walpole from Lincoln Electric, Joseph Watts of Bridgestone Credit Division, Stephanie Wernett from Breakthrough Schools, and Perry Zohos of Great Lakes Publishing. We would like to thank all of our advisory committee members for their commitment to student success at Cuyahoga Community College. Lending your expertise makes a huge difference. It's now my pleasure to introduce our Vice President of Government Relations and Community Outreach, Claire Rosacco. Congratulations to our Business Advisory Committee and our IT Center of Excellence Committee. We are so grateful to you for all of your good work. We'd now like to introduce you to our sixth annual Community Champion Award winners. These companies and individuals go above and beyond to support student success at Cuyahoga Community College. Once again, we received a number of excellent nominations and actually had a couple of ties. We begin with a tie for Corporate Community Champion in the category of a business with over 50 employees. This past year has been a challenging one and our two award winners helped the college continue to support student success during these turbulent times. For close to two decades, Westfield and Gretchen Long of the Westfield Foundation have partnered with the college to help end the cycle of poverty and replace it with a cycle of prosperity. Westfield provided funding to bridge the digital divide by funding Chromebooks, hotspots, and headphones for women and transition students. This is helping prepare the women in this program to be better equipped to continue their studies and explore new sustainable career options using technology. To reduce the language barrier at the Esperanza Access Center, 
Westfield support has allowed for an on-site translator who assists future students in gaining access to college programs. Through a collaboration with the Westfield Culinary Apprenticeship Program, the Tri-C Hospitality Program, and the American Culinary Federation, culinary students train and work on-site at Westfield in an accredited work and learn program supervised by Westfield's American Culinary Federation Certified Executive Chef. We are pleased to express our gratitude by honoring Westfield as a 2021 Corporate Community Champion. Our next Corporate Community Champion is Care Alliance and their president, Dr. Claude Jones. Care Alliance Health Centers is a federally qualified healthcare center providing medical, dental, and behavioral health services to the Cleveland community, regardless of their ability to pay. The center serves as a clinical site for metropolitan campus nursing students, which provides Tri-C students with excellent experience and the community with excellent care. When the pandemic struck, Tri-C turned to Care Alliance for assistance. For the past year, Care Alliance has conducted drive-up testing sites on a rotational basis at all four Tri-C campuses. This has resulted in Care Alliance testing more than 4,000 members of the college and community at large. Once the vaccine became available, Care Alliance became a vaccination partner providing over 200 vaccinations to Tri-C employees and students at their locations and eventually on-site at the Metropolitan and Eastern campuses. Recently, during President Biden's visit to the college, we were asked for assistance in testing for visitors who were meeting with the president. Care Alliance was able to quickly meet that need. In addition to the great work Care Alliance has provided to Tri-C, they continue to provide great work to the community at large. We are very grateful for their partnership and we are pleased to honor them as a corporate community champion. Now we honor our community champion business with less than 50 employees. Northern Ohio Recovery Association, also known as NORA, is a community-based substance abuse prevention and peer recovery support organization founded in 2008 by Anita Bradley. Ms. Bradley is a 2013 graduate of the Cuyahoga Community College Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program. Nora provides culturally relevant chemical dependency services with dignity and respect to youth, adults, and families in Northeast Ohio. The organization supports and provides prevention, treatment, and recovery in a 1,360 square mile territory that includes Cleveland, Akron, Lorraine, Elyria, Sandusky, and Vermilion. Nora is involved in a number of community programs working to prevent substance abuse with evidence-based approaches. They provide a next level of services to homeless women and their children with the New Step Recovery House. Residents receive affordable temporary housing in a safe and sober environment. Three hot meals a day, financial literacy, employment readiness, job leads, plus GED classes and trade certifications through a partnership with Cuyahoga Community College. Anita Bradley and Nora make a big difference in many lives and we are honored to recognize her work and her organization as a community champion. And finally, we have two community champions we'd like to introduce to you. Johnny Reed, Tri-C's Assistant Professor of Business, is a 2020 recipient of Cuyahoga Community College's Diversity and Inclusion Award for his commitment to diversity, inclusion, and public service far beyond the walls of academia. He has served for years as a board member for the Neighborhood Leadership Institute and the Twinsburg Public Library Foundation. Assistant Professor Reed has volunteered his time running financial literacy workshops all across Ohio for communities stricken by poverty. He's the kind of public servant who actively seeks out opportunities to address the systemic problems of racial and socioeconomic oppression, assisting individuals and communities to improve life. 
He is also a very popular Tri-C Speakers Bureau presenter. He has helped organize and facilitate poverty simulations at secondary schools, volunteered at the Greater Cleveland Food Bank, and has been involved in adult student visit nights in support of those seeking more education. He contributed to the first annual Tri-C Community Health Worker Forum and the Kenneth Clement Boys Leadership Academy. Congratulations to Assistant Professor Johnny Reed, a 2021 Cuyahoga Community College Community Champion. Our final awardee, Adam Smith, is now a Tri-C alum, having graduated this spring. While at the college, he was thoroughly involved with the Cleveland Humanities Collaborative, the Mandel Scholars Academy, and Phi Theta Kappa. He served two terms as vice president and two terms as president of the Metropolitan Campus History Club. Outside of the college, Adam's involvement included a 16-week internship with the Soldiers and Sailors Museum. He is the co-founder of a think tank for veterans called Complex Questions and a co-founder of the Cleveland Orchard Project, pitched at the annual Accelerate Cleveland competition. In addition, he serves as a mentor for Boy Scouts of America, is a junior fellow of the Cleveland Leadership Center's Advanced Leadership Institute, and volunteers with Safe Passages. Adam graduated as an Associate of Arts major and has accepted a scholarship to Stanford University, including full tuition, room, and board. What an amazing young man. We congratulate Adam Smith as a Cuyahoga Community College Community Champion. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Megan O'Brien, Vice President of Development and President of the Tri-C Foundation, who will introduce you to more amazing Cuyahoga Community College alumni. Thank you. Good morning. It's my pleasure to present Tri-C's fourth annual Alumni Awards. The Distinguished Alumni Award is presented to alumni who have established themselves as accomplished professionals, demonstrating notable achievement and service to the college or community more than 10 years after completing their studies. The Rising Star Alumni Award is presented to recent alumni within the past 10 years. This morning, we're happy to present one Rising Star and two Distinguished Alumni Awards. Our first Distinguished Alumni Award recipient is Arian Kirkpatrick. Ms. Kirkpatrick is CEO and President of the AKA Team, a full-service commercial construction and facilities company in Cleveland. She has grown her business to become a fully integrated construction management company with multiple divisions including general trades, commercial cleaning, and commercial waterproofing. Arian started the AKA team with small projects and is now known for work with the Cleveland Museum of Art, CMHA Administration Building, the Flats East Bank, Warrensville Heights City Schools, and many other high-profile projects. Arian had the opportunity to sit with President Obama at the Winning the Future Forum held in Cleveland to discuss obstacles that affect small businesses. She is very involved in the community and is the recipient of several awards, including Who's Who in Cleveland, the Diversity Matters Julian Earls Community Achievement Award, YWCA Women of Achievement, Kaleidoscope Entrepreneur Award, and was inducted into the Warrensville Heights School Hall of Fame. She serves on Tri-C's Workforce, Community, and Economic Development Board of Visitors and has volunteered her time as an alumna, serving on career panels for our students. She earned her Associate of Arts degree at the Eastern Campus in 1991, where she was inducted into Phi Theta Kappa and is a graduate of Cleveland State University with a BA in Nonprofit Administration. She also completed the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program at Tri-C. Ms. Kirkpatrick's proudest accomplishment is being the mother of two sons, Allie and Christopher. She's married to Danny Couch and has two stepdaughters, Camille and Jasmine, and five grandchildren. Congratulations to Arian Kirkpatrick. Our next distinguished alumni winner is Dr. Terry Pope. 
When she was named president of Cuyahoga Community College's West Shore campus in 2014, she brought with her unique perspectives forged through experiences as a Tri-C student, instructor, and faculty leader. Since then, she has overseen numerous initiatives to improve and expand access to learning. Dr. Pope led the One Door, Many Options for Success initiative, an integrated college-wide service model that transformed the student experience by providing structured educational pathways and support to reduce the time to college completion and increase the number of students who attained degrees, certificates, or job-related credentials. She collaborated with her campus leadership team to plan, direct, and manage instructional and student services programming, realign campus leadership positions to integrate faculty development with adjunct services and tutoring to create a wraparound educational support environment. Dr. Pope was also instrumental in establishing a learning cafe model featuring small group tutoring. Dr. Pope joined the college as an adjunct biology instructor in 1988 became a full-time instructor in 1991, and a tenured professor in 1997. Throughout her time, Dr. Pope has helped countless Tri-C students find their futures at her alma mater. Dr. Pope received Tri-C's Ralph M. Bessie Award for Teaching Excellence in recognition of her style of bringing curriculum to life for students, and the League of Innovations John and Sue Ann Rausch Excellence Award. She credits her academic and leadership successes with her start at Tri-C and values the rich diversity of the college as one of its greatest strengths. Dr. Pope holds a doctorate in philosophy with an emphasis in physiological chemistry from The Ohio State University and a Bachelor of Science from Case Western Reserve University, where she transferred after completing her first two years of college at Tri-C. She was an early supporter of the college's alumni initiative and has helped to enhance alumni engagement. She and her husband, William, who she met as a Tri-C student, have one son and a new grandchild with whom she is looking forward to spending more time as she begins her next chapter following her retirement from Tri-C in July 2021. Congratulations, Dr. Terry Pope. And now we are pleased to introduce you to our rising star. As a student at Tri-C, Harry Quinones had a dream of becoming an entrepreneur. He developed a business plan as a class project here, aspiring to bring part of his Puerto Rican heritage to Cleveland by opening a restaurant or market. As large numbers of individuals moved to the area after Hurricane Maria, he saw an opportunity for an ethnic market specializing in Puerto Rican goods, products, and groceries, and set out to realize his dream. While attending Tri-C, was an active member of the college's Hispanic Council. After graduating in 2019, the Jack Joseph and Morton Mandel Scholar and Tri-C Foundation Scholarship recipient transferred to Cleveland State's Honors College, majoring in business. Meanwhile, he continued to work on his dream. The idea he pitched for a bodega, a small Hispanic grocery, was a winner at CSU's 2019 Vike Tank Business Pitch Competition. Last year, he was a member of the winning team at the Start Up Vikes Business event, challenging teams to launch a business in one weekend. He plans to graduate next year. Earlier this year, Harry's dream became a reality when he opened 787 Market and Cafe in Old Brooklyn, where he specializes in Puerto Rican products and groceries and offers authentic prepared foods and coffee. He was recently featured on Idea Streams from Here to Career segment, which shared his story with those of other Northeast Ohioans pursuing their goals. Mr. Quinones is a beacon of light in the community and an inspiration to students speaking at the college's Hispanic Scholarship Luncheon and sharing his story through webinars and presentations. Congratulations, Harry Quinones. And congratulations to all who have been honored here today. We are grateful for your partnership and support and are so proud of your achievements. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you very soon.